Hello, my name is Carlo Buyuan. I'm a graduate assistant working with the Transnational NGO Initiative. Um, I am undertaking a brief interview with Chris Torgerson, uh, former Secretary General of Médecins Sans Frontières, or MSF, or better known as um, Doctors Without Borders in America. Uh, thank you for allowing us to interview you. Um, this will be a helpful tool for students and faculty alike. Thank you. Um, so my first question would be, what was uh, your motivation for becoming a transnational activist? <laughs> transnational activist? Well, yes. I'm still motivated to become a transnational <laughs> activist because that's quite a big title. Um, but um, I was motivated to um, get involved in, in, in the nonprofit world, particularly in humanitarian action, which you could mm -hmm. certainly um, consider as falling under that category, um, um, because uh, I... Um, I'm very interested in um, the simple idea of helping people in need and finding a way to do that with right. others in solidarity um, with those in need and um, providing very direct, impactful assistance is something that attracted me, of course, to an organization like MSF, Men's and Sans Frontieres, which has, of course, a very uh, um, uh, clear objective in providing assistance to those most in need in, in areas of the world where they don't have access to needed medical care. So right. very attractive mission to be involved yeah, with, definitely. and I've been very grateful to be a part of the organization for many years. Okay, so um, what does your current career path look like, and how and when did it start, and how did it evolve to, you know, to the position of Secretary General? Well, um, I actually originally started um, in a very non-traditional path, but I think, um, as I was saying earlier to some students, that's often the case, I think, in, in, in right. nonprofit world, but elsewhere as well. And so um, I started out with a much more academic background and got into a human rights work and decided that I really liked, for the reasons I mentioned before, humanitarian action um, because of the direct impact. And also, I particularly liked um, MSF because it has not only um, the uh, mission of helping those in need, but also to speak out and advocate um, uh, when it feels it's necessary to do so. Um, so I um, joined the organization and was able to um, uh, take on many roles, both in the headquarters and in, in, in the office in the United States to help build the organization, but also to work in the field. And that's critical, I think, um, within a uh, organization of, 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 of that nature to be able to see what the actual activities are on right. the ground and be a part of them. So I was able to be a communications coordinator in, in, in a number of, uh, of, of major emergencies where I could see the effectiveness on the, of the work on the ground. So therefore, that translates into being able to help um, a work on an international level uh, in, in the positions that I've held. Yeah, definitely with an organization like MSF, uh, you can see the work that you're doing, so you want to maintain that activism, and you know it kind of justifies the reason why joining such a great organization like that. Um, but in terms of when you were, I guess, you're in college, and and you also have a graduate degree as well. Mm -hmm. So how did you um, start from? You said that what was your um, undergrad major? Uh, East Asian Studies. Okay. Chinese. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of students have questions how to actually get into some of these big organizations, and it can seem very daunting. Sure. So how did um, you come from East Asian Studies to an organization <laughs> like MSF? Well, um, again, paths are not always absolutely direct, yeah, but I think that, you know, um, when you're in an inter any kind of international studies as an undergraduate, um, particularly coming from the United States where, you, you know, you're exposed to many different societies here in the U.S., right. Um, but to actually have the opportunity to study a foreign language and then to live abroad in a country which has a, a, a very different um, disparities between rich and poor that are uh, and very different types of cultural issues and, 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 and societal issues like I was able to see in China. I first I studied Chinese at an undergraduate and lived there for two years in the middle of my undergraduate career in the mid-1980s. Okay. And at that time, um, the situation in China was very different from what it is today. Yes. And so I was able to have a first-hand witness of some of the hardships that people were struggling through, um, um, both on a social level as well as political. And so I think that helped me to become a more of a, a, a politically aware and also internationally aware. So moving then to human rights, 
um, which is obviously a major uh, issue in, 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 in Chinese international affairs, and then moving into more direct humanitarian action. Um, actually, was not that strange of a path in the long run when you look back at it. Um, so I think the main tip, is, from my perspective, is getting that kind of exposure um, in any type of organization or studying abroad or you, the exposure that you get helps you understand you know what are the issues that the world is facing and which area are you interested in pursuing and and and, and then finding those organizations that are, are working to do what you're interested in right. if you persist you'll find a way just putting yourself out there is a very important thing it's really important yeah. and and most organizations I mean have as you know very strong internship programs in uh, MSF in the United States we built an internship program because uh, we felt that it was really important to bring in people who have been um, you know really interested in in working with the organization but couldn't find an entry point and to mm -hmm. give them the exposure um, that they can then use elsewhere or maybe they'll if we're lucky help apply it to, to, to the organization. So I think that most organizations are seeing the need to do that. So I think there are a lot of opportunities. Yeah, which I think is very important because a lot of uh, students today, they want to work for these organizations. They want to be transnational activists, but they just are too scared to get their foot in the door and you know just put themselves out there. So I think that's a very important thing for people to understand. Yeah, and I think that there are also, I mean, and I just was listening here on campus today to a number of students who have formed their own groups on campus to help either support an issue or to um, work with organizations or put on events like this, et cetera, to, to be involved in, in a more direct way um, with the different types of organizations and issues uh, that are involved, as you call it, in transnational activism. Right, right. So I think there are lots of ways to do it. And um, you said that your graduate studies, uh, what, what did you uh, study exactly? Um, uh, do you really want to know? Because Yan Yong said, I studied uh, uh, modern Chinese women's literature. Okay, interesting. <laughs> interesting. But they were very strong activists back in the 1920s right. in China. So, uh, yeah, definitely. So, um, when you were the Secretary General, how was your normal day like? What were some of the routines, some of the some of the type of uh, you know, things that you, you did every day, and what should students imagine that's like? Well, I think um, working for an organization like MSF, which is an emergency medical organization, um, and um, is uh, constantly, again, focused on what are the field needs, means that there's very rarely a normal day. Right. So <laughs> that you make a to-do list, and I make a lot of to-do lists, and mm -hmm. um, by the end of the day, you look back on that to-do list, and none of that was done, but you've gotten a whole new one. <laughs> so, I mean, there are, of course, the normal things you do. Part of the Secretary General's job is managing the international office, so managing your team, putting in you know regular discussions with them to ensure their work is going on, managing the budget, etc. And then um, convening, um, a lot of what I, I did was about convening meetings with the various parts of the organization um, to come to a consensus on decisions and a way forward. So a lot of what I did was organizing meetings and okay. traveling to meetings and meeting with the various people in the organization. And then another, another really um, interesting part, of course, is, is representation um, to other actors, other organizations, or going on the field, uh, meeting with government officials and others um, when there's a need for that type of representation. So, okay. not very typical always. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of um, surprises you yes. can have every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, what knowledge, pers perspectives, and skills um, that you learned um, proved to be useful in your career? Um, patience, diplomacy, mm -hmm. um, uh, perseverance. <laughs> For sure, um, because uh, and uh, knowing when I think to no longer be so patient and choosing those moments, um, because of course, um, working in an organization that has a lot of diversity, a culture of debate, you need to allow for the space to have that debate, you need to allow for different opinions. You want those different opinions because you know what you think the direction might be might be changed very different once you've actually heard those debates. So there's a reason for that. So you want to have the patience to allow all of that and the diplomacy to bring the people around to, mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, and then you want to know when the right moment is to, to, to bring things to a close and to move forward because uh, you, you, you do have to have a decisions at some point and right. there are moments where you say, okay, now we have to move and 
hope that you chose the right moment. Yeah, that must be very difficult to determine. Sometimes, yes, <laughs> you make mistakes. Yeah. yeah, but definitely you learn from your mistakes, which is a very important thing to mm -hmm. just to know. So um, in terms of career advice, uh, advice, what advice do you give for students who wish to pursue a career in um, NGO or transnational activism? I think um, what I was saying before is, I mean, already on campus there are plenty of issues um, to get involved with, plenty of, um, of initiatives that can be taken to get firsthand. Because being an activist starts, you, 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 you can be an activist, you know, um, on campus already. You can be an activist when you move to a bigger career, but you can, you can start on campus. Then you can um, look toward which organizations that um, you think are aligned with what the issues, I mean, you should look at the issue and the mission of the organization, not just that maybe they have a cool office or something. I mean, not, not that any of your students would be, but they really, you know, because if you're going to work as hard as you're going to work within mm -hmm. in that field, you have to have a passion right. for what you're doing and you have to believe in the objectives and the mission mm -hmm. and of, of that organization. So it's really important that you know, you, you, you have that exposure, um, um, whether it's through internships, whether it's taking a short you know, a uh, field uh, assignment that's sometimes easier to get earlier on and mm -hmm. or going to a place and seeking things, opportunities there. Um, there are lots of ways, but I think it's important to find what you're passionate about and pursue that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for um, answering all the questions. Thank you very much for having me. And it was a pleasure to, uh, to interview you. Okay, so then you'll know that you could be a Chinese literature major and also... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think that's very important for people to know that you don't, with NGOs, there's not really a, you know, you don't take NGO studies necessarily in college. It's just adapting is definitely one of the biggest skills for NGO work. For sure, you so, said it very well. So yeah. thank you very much. Yes, thank you.